Hi everyone, it's Jake here from First Track Dance and welcome back again for another YouTube video. Today we're working on this Volkswagen Golf GTI. It's got quite a nasty bend in the driver's door edge, but I'll be showing you the tools and the process that I use to turn this into this. So stay tuned. Okay, so as you've seen in the before intro, we're working on this Volkswagen Golf GTI. So the customer opened their door in really high winds. The door was taken from their hands straight into a telegraph pole. But luckily, because it was a wooden telegraph pole, it hasn't caused any paint damage to the edge itself. So looking at this door, we can see that the main impact point is here. And this has pulled round with it quite a large chunk of the door, approximately, I would say about 30 centimeters in length. But before we get into this repair, let me explain a little bit about the construction of this door because it's slightly different than most conventional doors. So what you'll find is that most doors are made up of two parts. So you've got the inner section, which is the door frame itself, and then you've got the outer section, which is the door skin. Now on a conventional door, the door skin wraps around the frame. It's then welded at various points, sealed with seam sealer as shown here, and then painted. So. Imagine this is the door frame and this is the actual door skin. So it's a kind of cut through section to illustrate how this works. So on the door frame itself, you'll notice the frame comes up and then you've got this little lip on the outer edge of the door. So what happens in the factory is the door skin itself comes down and is laid on to the edge of the, the door frame. Then what happens is a set of pinch rollers will come along onto the outer edge and they'll roll this edge flat so the edge has now been lipped all the way onto the actual door frame itself. Now, if we look at the cross section here now, where all these layers of metal are sandwiched together, we can actually see that there's three layers now. So we've got two layers that have been created by the, the outer door skin being sandwiched against the frame, and we've got the frame itself, which is another layer. Now, this helps to make this a really strong door edge, which when pushed on the edge, it's really difficult to bend it around. So with the conventional method, if you wanted to replace the door skin, it's quite a big job. So you need to cut off the old door skin, weld in a new one, reseal it and repaint it. Now in contrast, Volkswagen came up with the idea of having a bolted door skin. Now if you look closely, you can just see the fixing bolts which hold the door skin onto the door frame. So this time, let's have a look at the door frame. So it's very similar to the conventional door frame as we saw before, but this time you'll notice that there's various holes punched in the side of the frame. And if we look at the door skin itself, we can see that there's a frame bonded onto the inner part of the door skin with threaded fixing points. Also, you'll notice that the perimeter edge of this door skin has already been lipped over, as seen here. So as before, the skin is laid down on top of the door frame, but this time they're fixed together using bolts. Sounds like a great idea. But now look at the edge when these are fixed together. With the conventional method shown here on the left, there were three layers of metal sandwiched together, giving it good strength. However, with the Volkswagen method here on the right, we only have two layers. But really, because the lip on the edge here is so small, it's almost like just having one layer. It's now much more weaker and the edge bends a lot more easily. Now, this method does have its advantages, obviously. Now, if you do need to change the door skin, it's quite easy to just unbolt the panel using the bolts at the side of the frame, remove it, replace with a new one, bolt it together and you're done. However, as far as I know on all the latest VW models, they've now gone back to using the conventional method. Okay, so lastly, before we get into this repair, these are the tools that I'll be using today to fix this damage. So I've got my standard hand tools over here, nothing fancy, just basic hand tools. The tip on this one is slightly sharper than this one. I've got my aluminium knockdown, which is here, which I'll be using in conjunction with the ultra dense screw on tips. I've got the large rubber tip, I've got the standard rubber tip and I've got the nylon tip. I've also got a standard nylon tap down which is here 
and I'll be using this standard panel beating hammer which is here. I'll leave some links below of where you can get these tools from, but now let's get into this repair. <laughs> Now when carrying out a repair like this, the use of heat is really important as we don't want to crack or split the paint, especially as we have to strike the edge of the panel. So as you can see, I start off by gently tapping the edge back around with my aluminium tap down using the large rubber tip. It's important to take your time and go up and down the panel gradually drawing the damage out, rather than trying to do it all in just a few hammer blows. Okay, and when this is done, it's really important to check the alignment of the door with the adjacent panel to make sure both panels align correctly and you haven't brought the edge back out too far. Once this is achieved, the next thing to do is to correct the hard line that's been created here, just in from the edge. This is the pivot point of where the metal has bent around. It's actually the frame which I demonstrated earlier on my mock-up model, pushing through into the outer skin. This is quite common when a metal edge bends around and also when you bend it back the other way. You're always gonna get a hard line or fold line as you can see here. So to remove this, I'm using one of my nylon tap downs. So depending on how bad the line is, I always make a choice of how sharp the tap down needs to be. In this case, the crease line wasn't very sharp, so I started with a more rounded nylon tap down tip to gently knock this ridge back down. Here, you have to be very accurate with your hammer blows. It also takes quite a bit of time and patience to do. So I'll speed this part up. So after tapping down this high ridge, you can clearly see that we are now left with some low areas in front of where this high ridge was. This is quite often the case when an edge is bent back straight again. It can distort slightly and create some low areas. This is where the flat shape hand tools come in, as these can be used to lift these low areas back up again. Now, as I illustrated earlier, this isn't a conventional door. So luckily, rather than taking the door trim off or going down the window aperture to get on the back of these low areas, there is a space between the door skin and the frame to push the tool into, as illustrated on my mock-up model here. I'm using quite a sharp tool here and plenty of heat as I need to push the tools through the rubber sealant behind the frame in order to get onto the back of the low areas. Some of the pushes will be a bit sharper than I would like and I can't use tesla tape on the tool tip as it just won't push through the sealant. But it's not a problem as they can be tapped level again using the sharp nylon tap down as shown here. Okay, so after a lot of pushing backwards and forwards and after a lot of tapping down, we've finally got the edge back straight again. Just needs a quick polish to remove any surface marks and the job's complete. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little bit longer than some of my other videos and a lot more in depth. But if you found it interesting or useful or you learned something in any way, it'd be great to hear about it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, it'd be great to get a thumbs up. And if you want to see and learn more about the paintless dent removal process and see more repairs like this, then why not subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified as soon as new videos are available. But for now, 
We'll see you on the next video.